Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Soups and Sammy's, your wintertime survival kit. We have a uh, Longmeadow resident, uh, Julia Mitchell here. She's gonna walk us through a couple of uh, soup and sandwich pairings and give us a talk through of some alternatives. Uh, you're welcome uh, to cook along, to take notes. Uh, we will have time for question and answers. Uh, so I'm gonna uh, pass it off to Julia so we can get started right away. Uh, Julia, welcome and thank you. Fantastic, thanks so much. I greatly appreciate it and I'm, how many of y'all, I, I can't see your hands, but uh, I'll, I'll know just through the spirit through the phone. How many of y'all didn't think that um, you would survive COVID with the library closed? I, I have missed that library. I mean, we would take walks in the evening and just be like sad puppies outside the door, just hoping it was going to open again. So I know that we're not in person and it would be a lot more fun in person because you guys would be able to eat all these goodies we're gonna to make tonight, but um, we'll do the next best thing and we'll show you some good tips that you can use in the kitchen. So I know some of y'all because I've done some cooking presentations around town as well as in some surrounding cities, but just a brief thing, my name is Julia Mitchell. We've lived here a couple of years. We moved here from Canada, but you can probably tell from my accent that we're not Canadian. We, uh, we're from the American South and we got transplanted up to Canada and we were just lucky enough that the next transplant came to Massachusetts. And we uh, basically, I've told my husband that if he's moving from here, he's gonna have to get another wife. So um, you can tell that if I, if I cook really well tonight, you know that it's gonna be hard for him to leave me. So um, he's, he's a good guy, but he does like a good meal. So, um, so maybe, maybe my job is safe, but um, I love this presentation. I uh, do it a lot in the winter time because um, people it, people need something warm and nourishing, not just because it's cold outside, but our bodies are actually uh, sort of uh, on a cycle of food. And so during the winter time, we want these comforting, warming soups. And um, stews are wonderful. I love stews. But stews take time and to get it right, it really takes a lot of time to get to get that, you know, the, all that hardiness. And so a number of years ago, I started working on a presentation where I could do soups that are um, easy to do in the kitchen with just a few tricks that you could put together pretty quick in the afternoon and it would taste like they had been simmering all day. Because soups are one of those things, like I said, not just stews, but all of them, that they, they get better when they uh, have time to sort of percolate, you know? And so, um, so these soups are ones that even just uh, coming right out, uh, they really, really have some great flavor. And most of that is because of just a few tricks. And if you learn these tricks, then you can also incorporate that into other, um, other um, uh, Cooking, cooking things you do, and you'll see some great benefits too. Now, Sammy's, Sammy's, the sandwich is having a revival. We all say that everything goes in a trend, you know, and about two years ago, I probably tested so many donuts. I, the donut craze was, uh, it was just, it was insane. I, uh, it, donuts were the uh, be all end all. And then it sort of leaned toward right before the pandemic, the big word in food was brunch. That's what everybody was wanting developed. And that's what everybody wanted um, uh, for menus and stuff for magazines. And so we were putting together brunch recipes like crazy. But since COVID hit, sandwiches have gotten this huge revival. And the big thing in sandwiches right now is what small things can you do to incorporate to build a big flavor? And a lot of that has come about because of COVID. It's like, okay, I have mayonnaise, I have this, whatever, but what can I do to make this taste really special and different? So uh, I'm gonna show you some of those tricks tonight too. And we're gonna do you know, a sandwich or sandwich-ish side dishes um, and, and, and and if you have a soup and a sandwich, you have got a great meal in my opinion. So the first thing we're gonna start with is the chicken tortilla soup. And um, this is, I have other tortilla, chicken tortilla soups that I make that take hours to braise the chicken and chipotle sauce and all this. And it comes out and it can be served in a fine dining restaurant. 
but this is not what we're doing tonight. We are doing a everybody's hungry, we want to eat, but I want something really flavorful. And with just a few short ingredients, I'm going to show you how to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is take two tablespoons of vegetable oil. Now, the first thing you, we have is I've got a medium onion that I've chopped, okay? Two cloves of garlic that I've sliced. Now, that's one of the tips right there. Slicing garlic in things you're going to simmer releases more flavor. When you dice it, what happens is it, um, it will give a pack to when you take a bite, but when you slice it, it actually uh, incorporates into the chicken broth quicker. And then the next thing that we have is a uh, chipotle in an adobe sauce. And so I wish I'd saved the can, but you can see this is what it looks like when you take it out of the can. That is the adobe sauce. And then the, the um, it will just be one pepper. So like the one pepper is like this. And I just use, this is one of the tricks. Let me get this off my hand. This is one of the tricks to add big flavor in a short amount of time. Adobe sauce and these uh, peppers can deepen your soup really quickly. So, um, and so I, I keep these all the time. Now what happens is I only need to use one, maybe two in a recipe. So what I do is I just put it in a freezer bag, I label it and I keep it in the freezer. If I need it, I just take it out of the freezer in, in the bag Put it into the sink in a bowl for like 15 minutes in some, you know, lukewarm water and it's soft enough again and I pull out another pepper, dice, dice, dice. If I don't use it all, put it back in the freezer. So um, a can is maybe a dollar and it will totally deepen your soups. I meant to tell you this at the beginning. Um, there is a contest amongst chefs. Uh, you may have read about it. It's really a fun contest and it's, and it's uh, some of the best chefs in the world compete in it. They have 20 minutes to make a soup. Now, most people making a soup in 20 minutes would be ridiculous, but some of the tips that I am showing you tonight are a lot of the tips that they do to make that good, rich, rich deep flavor in a soup in a very short amount of time. So one of those is your uh, chipotles in adobe sauce. That can really, in really increase your time. The next one is taking all of your vegetables and softening them. If you start with a, um, start by not softening your vegetables, you're never gonna get them to release their flavor. And so what you're trying to do is create that deep, deep flavor into the broth in a short amount of time. So, we put our uh, 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 chopped up pepper with the adobe sauce, the onion, the garlic, and some chili powder. And then what I'm doing is I am actually going to soften all that, but I put kosher salt on all these vegetables. Now, normally, I bet most of y'all have been taught, don't salt your soup until the end because salt is a building spice. And so whatever you, you put into your salt, put into your soup, the flavor of salt actually builds and increases. But one of the tips for making these faster soups is you put the kosher salt in with your veg and then we um, gotta turn on and I'm gonna put uh, two tablespoons of oil into my, into my um, pot here. And then we're gonna soften these vegetables. So once we put this, we get this a little warm, I should have turned this on beforehand, I'm sorry about that. Once we get this warm, then I'm gonna put in the um, uh, onion, the garlic, the chipotle and the adobe sauce, the chili powder, and then the salt that is already in there. And the reason why salt, this tip works is that the salt tells those vegetables, release your water, release your flavor. And so this was done about, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes ago. And you can sort of already see that these onions 
See, they're releasing a liquid. And so what that's also releasing is, is flavor. And so it's like giving your soup this huge head start. So um, I am sadly waiting for this oil. Isn't that so fun? It's like waiting for paint to dry. Um, and we're going to let it go over the heat and we're gonna let that soften for about five minutes. So it's even the um, use of the salt beforehand is even shortening our vegetable softening. Now, I'm also gonna tell you something you should not do. Don't start with a pan this small. Now it's gonna work and I'm gonna show you how it's gonna work. But I have got, I don't know where all of my uh, big soup dishes have gone. I've, um, but we've had both of our children in, who knows, maybe they're, may, uh, it, it seems that when they come to visit us for Christmas, things begin to go home with them. So, so uh, uh, it should weigh their luggage down and they shouldn't be able to pass, uh, pass their luggage through security. But uh, there, there has been some La Quisette pans that I think have made it back to their house. So anyway, but today I could not find a larger one uh, I could only find my two of them large, so we're having to go with a, a medium-sized one, but we'll make it work. But one thing is, when you're softening your vegetables, you don't want them all laying on top of each other. You don't want them all, you know, you want them to spread out and have some room. It makes the softening process quicker, but also it's not leaching the water on the one on top of it to the one below. What you want is to get that water leached out into the rest of it. So, um, okay, I'm gonna get that going. We're not to the perfect temperature yet, but as I say, we're good enough for government work here. So I'm gonna spread that out. There we go. And you can see that garlic's been sliced rather than um, diced. If you can see those every once in a while. That chili powder is joining up with the oil and, um, and it's gonna create this nice base. The other thing that it's doing, and, and people forget about this, there is an art to what we call seasoning the pan. So as we're doing this, we are creating our first layer of flavor. Okay, we're gonna let that sit for just a moment. And as we're creating that layer of flavor, we are, um, we're basically sort of, it, it's sort of like a, it's getting the party started in the right way. You know, it's getting, uh, uh, joining the chili powder up with the oil and all that is getting it started in the right way. Now, again, if I could find my La Quisette pan, I don't want these veggies to be spread out a little bit more, but I'm sure, I'm sure our oldest is probably, cooking beanie weenies in it or something tonight, but he'll fess up to it eventually. So we're gonna let that um, let that go for just a moment. And since we're, we're gonna go ahead and start on the Sammy that's gonna go with this one. And you're, you're already gonna see that I am uh, not doing a traditional Sammy. I'm actually doing a Mexican street pizza. So um, let's move this soup bowls out. We're gonna need those in a few minutes. Okay, so while that softens, let's get going on this next recipe over here. Okay. So I am going to start up this grill pan. So one thing that makes uh, these quick meals and all that have some good flavor is that you impart the flavor in uh, when you can. So things like this, we're going to grill the corn as well as grill a uh, poblano chili pepper. So um, don't you wish everything like in your own house would just all of a sudden, you know, oh, it's time for dinner and there would be a tray ready for you to you know, uh, you know, put it all together, right? So, um, so this is called Mexican street corn pizza. I don't know how many of y'all have been to Mexico and seen how they make street corn, but the way they do it is they um, pull the husks back, they leave the husks on, 
and they put it over a hot coals on the street. And then they do a mixture of um, uh, cheese and mayo and lime and a little bit of chili pepper and all this. And they coat the corn in that. And it has this wonderful flavor. And um, since pizza is one of my favorite things in the whole world, I, um, I was like, man, how can we get that kind of great corn flavor and put that with um, uh, the ease of eating with a pizza? So, um, so that's basically what we've done. Um, so I, I have one small problem tonight in that normally I would do this with a whole ear of corn. And, but I could not find an ear of corn. So today we are doing it with, um, uh, I had to just have sh shucked corn. So it's all right, it's not shucked, I'm sorry. It's just uh, off the ear corn. So, um, so we are um, starting over here and we are gonna take our poblano pepper. Now, a lot of people don't know about this fantastic pepper of life. If you eat like chili relleno or something like that, this is normally what they stuff it into. Um, and it has, it has a little bit of heat to it, but it's not like a jalapeno heat. It sort of has a slow burn of the heat. So um, what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna take a grill pan and we're gonna put it on rocket hot, like really hot. So it's over there right now cooking, cooking with a rocket hot. And then I'm gonna spray it with a little cooking spray. Normally I would add the corn that's just shucked on there. But today what I'm going to do is add just loose corn. Um, I'm just going to add loose corn to it so that it can get some char. And the reason why you want some char is because um, charring adds flavor. So the same thing of before you do a pot roast and you put it in the pan and you get some good caramelization on that meat and then you put it in the oven. The same thing is with this pizza. The real flavor comes from the charring we're going to do for it. And I am gonna um, take some corn and some poblano, and we're gonna take this over here and put it on here and let it start um, starting getting that good char on it. Okay, so I would normally spray spray this, but I don't know where I put the pan. So we are really close to rocket hot. It's not quite to rocket hot, so I'm gonna give it a minute. Uh oh, while I'm over here, let's check this. Look at that. See how that has created this wonderful base for our soup? And the onions are getting good and soft. They might need a minute or two. I wish we had smell of vision How does it smell, Tim? Mmm, smells great. Good. Super. So we're going to give that another minute. It's not quite rocket hot. Now, a lot of people ask me how. How do I get it to rocket hot? Well, obviously you put it on high. That's one thing. The other thing is, is you lay, you put your hand about uh, three inches above and you should be able, if you hold your hand there for five seconds, you should begin to feel, not just feel the heat, it should begin to begin to feel uncomfortable. And when it's uncomfortable in about five seconds, then you know you're to rocket hot, okay? So right now I can hold my hand right there and all it feels right now is, is uh, nice and toasty. So I'm gonna give it one more minute. So back to the soup. And turn that down a little bit. And we are going to put in our chicken stock. Now, if you open up my refrigerator or my freezer, you will see beautiful um, chicken stock. Because after we have chicken, every time that I just go ahead and throw the chicken in with some onions and carrots and celery and some herbs, and I just make a beautiful chicken stock. Goodness gracious, everything wants to be ready at the same time. They're not going to let me talk. So, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and just, you can see that is definitely, so I'm going to put that pepper on there. And I'm also going to put some of this corn on here.
spread that out. Now, let's use just a few things. If something is rocket hot, then treat it like a rocket and you know it's hot. And don't, don't think, well, I can just move that around my fingers, right? You go ahead and you get the hot pad or you get tongs or something, but don't, don't think that that means uh, just because it looks like just little nibbles of corn. Don't, don't do what I just did. Okay, so back to this tortilla soup. Our onions are definitely soft now. So um, I greatly, greatly encourage you to make your chicken stock. But today, because we are going at a fast pace and showing you how to do fast soup, I'm using from the canned stuff. Um, this swanton comes in low sodium, so um, so it makes it easy. You only need about one and a half of this. You need about six cups, uh, six cups. So I encourage you to make your own chicken stock, but if you can't, I will say this is an okay alternative. The good thing is I always use ones that are low in sodium so that I can build that salt profile myself. I know I've, I have already tipped the salt guys because I put in this salt before. Um, And I always don't put all of the um, uh, broth in because I need I need a little bit of control on how to be able to adjust things later. Uh oh, we, now we got popcorn going. When it's rocket hot, it will pop around. So we've got some char marks on our pepper there. So we'll just keep that going. So we're going to let this soup come up to a boil. And when the soup comes up to a boil, then I'm going to um, add the corn that will go in the soup. And I'm going to let that cook for five more minutes just simply to heat that through. And then I'm going to take the, uh, the soup off of the heat and I'm going to add the tomato and the cooked chicken that I've already done, and um, cilantro, and a little bit of lime juice. Now, a lot of people ask, well, um, why don't, why don't you put that in there and keep it heating? Well, one thing is, is that um, the lime juice is, um, is that acid I need to get a little bit of of uh, alternative flavor. So that's one of the other tips when you're trying to make a fast soup is have a little bit of acid somewhere. And so uh, if you let it boil too much with that acid, you will get um, sort of a bitter back taste in your soup. Nobody wants that. So right now we're just waiting for this to boil. And, um, and I am going to add in each bowl a little tortilla chip. Now, I am a tortilla chip snob, okay? I like them crisp. I want them with a little bit of salt, but most of all, I don't want it to be just only white corn, only yellow corn. So this is a good one that has a mixture of yellow and white corn. And so a lot of times in Mexico, what they'll do is they will actually fry up some corn tortillas and um, put that on top. And the reason why they do it that way is because they want to add things like avocado and um, uh, toppings to their cilantro and stuff, toppings to their, um, to the top. And, 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 and it creates a nice little island for everything to be on. So um, I, on this soup, make it a little easier in the bowl. I'm actually going to put the uh, tortilla chips crushed up in the bowl and let the soup go on top. So um, it's a little different, but if you would like to do it, the more traditional way to just take those um, corn tortillas, cut them into strips, toss it into a pan with just a little bit of oil, and you'll have true Mexican style tortilla strips. And um,
good char we're getting here. We're going to turn this over. That corn's wanting to char up well. The pepper's not there quite there yet. Okay. So while that's going, I'm going to um, I am going to start with the pizza base over here. So I've cheated tonight, and I've actually got um, pizza dough. Our day has gone crazy today, and I meant to wake up early and get this pizza dough going. I didn't get a chance to do that, so I am using a shortcut. And I am, so put a little flour on your work area. Um, a lot of people, when they do make homemade pizza, they complain that the pizza dough is, like, they'll stretch it to a certain size, and then it will get, um, uh, it will, it will bounce, you know, bounce back, you know, it'll, it'll shrink back up. <clears throat> the reason for that, or one of the reasons for that is that the glutens have not been, uh, relaxed enough. And so you need, uh, to let the dough get to room temperature. It is so much happier when it's, don't take it right out of the refrigerator and expect it to be able to, um, um, be able to be malleable without bouncing back. So I've taken this out of the refrigerator uh, about 20 minutes ago, 30 minutes ago. And as you can see, I am able to stretch this dough and, oh, well, I can also tear this dough. So um, I think I'm getting, uh, we've got so many people you can't see that are out of the camera that are like smelling the pepper and all that that are eager to eat. So um, I'm getting nervous that the uh, lions are restless, the tigers are restless or whatever. The, ant the zoo animals are hungry. So um, so what we're doing here is I put a pizza pan in the oven. Now, one of the keys for good pizza at home is temperature. Uh, we or put that into a 500 degree oven and I am Letting that preheat, a preheated pan is really the key to a great pizza at home. Now, 500 is about all I can rec uh, recommend for a home oven. I have done it higher than that in some ovens, more professional ovens, but I will tell you that at home, going higher than 500, you really are risking damage to your oven. At that point, you're almost cleaning your oven. So um, we've got our pizza dough stretched out and okay, let me check on our, our, uh, our grill over here. Ooh, the corn's looking good. My pepper needs a little. I think I'm gonna take this corn up and um, take the corn up and leave the pepper. Set that in there. Put that great grilled corn into a pan that will sit to the side. It will warm up again when it goes on the pizza. And remember that pizza's at 500 degrees, so it will get. And then we're just going to put that back on the rocket pot again. And we're going to set, get that sablano pepper to take some of that good grilling. Give our soup a little swish here. Mm, smelling good. Okay. Um, here. Okay, so once we get our dough to the size that we want, um, we are going to take a piece of parchment paper. Um, and that is how you do not get burned in your, um, uh, burned when you're putting your uh, pizza in the oven. So we're gonna put a little cornmeal on our, now cornmeal, the only thing, it, it does add a little bit of flavor to your pizza, 
But most of all, what it does is it serves as little bitty rollers. So that dough is just gonna be able to roll right off of here. So I'm gonna take the pizza dough, set it on here. Set it on here. And I'm going to, um, ideally you want this to go to like a 14 inch circle, but, um, but I have less dough than normally. And so I am simply going to um, Okay, so I'm going to prick the top of our pizza dough. And I'm going to give it a little bit of olive oil. And I'm gonna brush that in. When you're cooking at this high temperature, you're trying to protect your bread. So this will, the pricking will allow it not to puff up so much and the olive oil will allow everything to, to adhere to it well. And then I'm going to top with, you know what? I forgot my mozzarella, hold on one second. I'm going to top with low moisture mozzarella. And low moisture on this particular pizza works the best because it is, um, we are trying to limit the moisture on this pizza. So I'm using low moisture mozzarella. And then I am going to, um, uh, you want to leave a border because everybody likes having a little bone, but also I use the cheese sort of as a border guard. They, uh, it keeps all the other ingredients in, right? And um, then I'm going to top with this beautiful, beautiful corn. Let me get a spoon. Oh. Uh, this recipe is great in the summertime when the corn comes in. Um, I like to have soup in the summertime. I know a lot of people really only like to have soup in the wintertime. I think a great soup in the summer really highlights all the great vegetables that come in. And so this corn in this particular recipe, boy, does it shine. It is just fantastic. So, um, mm. That's good. That's good. Okay. I'm going to put the poblano on there also. Um, but the poblano, I don't think it's quite ready. Let me see. It's getting there. Oh, yeah. We're getting there. Stir this soup too. Okay. You know what? I'm going to say that poblano has worked hard enough for us there. Come on over here. Now, let me show you something about peppers. Peppers are funny little creatures, okay? What you want is you want the outer part of that pepper, okay? The inside of the pepper in what we call the ribs and the seeds, that's where the heat is. The more ribs and seeds that you include, so these right here, the more ribs and seeds that you include, the hotter your um, taste experience is going to be. So I know that my little 11-year-old is going to be eating this, and he likes hot stuff, but not, not so much with a, he doesn't want his tongue to be on fire. So... Mm. So there we go. So let me just dice this up real quickly and we'll put it on our pizza. You know what, while I'm 
slicing this up. Does anybody have any questions that I can answer before we uh, start on to the next thing? I don't have any questions in the chat right now. Um, I did uh, change the settings so that people can unmute themselves if they'd like to turn on their mics and ask a question. Okay. okay. Have, um... Well, this pepper, um, a lot of times if you cook jalapenos the same way that I just showed, showed you, your eyes will begin to burn because it actually releases oils into the air. And poblanos do not do that. They do have oils, every pepper has oils, but it doesn't release into the air as much. And it, um, and so you'll notice, even though the poblanos have heat, it doesn't have a mouth burning effect to it. So we're gonna put these poblanos on this beautiful pepper. Now, I'm doing this on a pizza, mainly because I think it is so absolutely beautiful. However, you can do it just as a sandwich also, and it works out great. You just simply uh, make it like a calzone. Um, <clears throat> so we've done the mozzarella, we've done the corn and the poblano. I'm gonna put a little salt and pepper on here. Oh, I am so glad I did not eat lunch today because we are gonna, this smells so good. A little salt. Okay. And we are going to um, bake this in the oven. Again, it's at 500 degrees and we're gonna do it just until the crust is set and the cheese is bubbly. Now, when it comes out, we are going to um, sprinkle it with a Mexican cheese, okay? Uh, and I just learned that I pronounced this wrong. After years, I always called it katija, and it is not. It is not. <laughs> it is katija. Katija. But um, that's my Alabama coming out. It is not katija. So it's katija. So you're gonna, we're gonna sprinkle that on top. That's gonna go on top. And then the other thing that's gonna go on top is cilantro because cilantro goes on everything, Mexican. And then the last thing that goes on top, that's the piece de la resistance, is I've taken some sour cream and I've mixed it with um, uh, lime juice. And we're just gonna snip the edge of this and we're gonna drizzle this all over the pizza. And the final piece, every Mexican corn has this and it really does, it takes it up a notch, is uh, paprika. And we're gonna take this paprika and give it a good little sprinkle of it. And, and you're gonna think that um, your tongue is gonna slap your brains out, it is so good. So let's go put this in the oven. <laughs> Now, Tim is being very nice, but not uh, opening my thing, but this is gonna be the one time where it doesn't go off easily here. You know what? I am gonna cheat tonight and just leave it on the paper. Put it on in there. There you go. Okay, so we're gonna, hey Google, set a timer for 10 minutes. 10 minutes. And we're starting now. Perfect. Okay, so our pizza is cooking, but I saw that our soup that goes along with this is now giving a good boil for us. So now that it's boiling, I'm going to add the corn to this soup. Somebody asked, Julia, is it easy to find the chipotle in adobe? or did you No, but I'm going to tell you where you can find it. It is hard to find it. However, ShopRite in Enfield carries it regularly, but that's not where I get it, okay? The dollar store in Enfield always has it. Now, I don't know why they always have it, but they always have it. So I, um, I when I'm passing through Enfield, I always stop and I get a couple cans. 
So that was an excellent question. No, it is not easy to find. And um, it used to be you could find it really easily, but now for some reason it's just not easy to find. So all we did was put the corn in. Good question, thanks. And now we're just gonna let that just cook for just a couple of minutes and then we're gonna pull it off the heat and then put the, um, the chicken, the tomato and the cilantro in. And then that soup is basically done. Now, uh, we'll put our um, uh, tortilla chips in the bowl and serve it on top. Now, I personally like a little cheese in my tortilla soup. And uh, for years, I would have said you put um, you put that katija uh, cheese in. But uh, tonight, we'll do it properly and put our... Uh, you don't call it a mojito, do you? I don't call it a mojito. <laughs> I should have known. I, you know, like I said, my Alabama was coming out. So, um, so... We are, um, we're gonna put a little cheese on there too. But if I, if, if, if what I really like on this soup is, um, is I like just a little bit of um, radishes. Um, it's not traditional to do this. Radishes have a pepper flavor. And the reason why I'm mentioning these is that um, people found in, these, in this fast soup contest that they do, this 20 minute soup, they found that, um, the the accessories they put on the soup is what made the soup go over the over the top. So um, you know we're gonna get our bowl ready. And uh, I'm gonna grab a radish. So the accessories are what give it that little extra kick. Okay, we got our cheese ready. A little radish chopped up. Okay, we are ready. So we're gonna pull this off the heat. Now, before we do anything final, we're going to do what's called the French method. The key to good soup is tasting, okay? And I am a lazy cook. A lot of y'all know that. You've seen me potato this before, but this is one of my lazy cook methods. Always carry two spoons with you. So I am right-handed. So right hand is going to be my dirty spoon. So I'm going to, with my left spoon, I'm going to dip into this. And then with my right spoon, um, I'm going to taste it. And then these spoons go in my pocket right here. When I want to taste again, I pull them out in the same order. And then I can, um, I never have to have a bunch of tasting spoons in the house. Okay. Tim, are you going to be my taster? Sure. Okay. So. So we're curious. Did you like your taste or no? You, you know what? <laughs> I added an extra chipotle pepper because I, I wanted it and it is spicy. And so I was, I was hold. Oh, you know what? Oh, goodness gracious! I swear it's so spicy. I forgot to put the rest of the ingredients in. Sorry, we've got to put in our chicken and our tomato. <laughs> I said, well, 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 don't worry about that bowl, babe. Well, that bowl's going away. And then, <clears throat> I uh, Tim knows I'm I'm okay with spicy, but it was so spicy I had to do a spicy dance. So uh, remember, uh, one of the other tips when you're making a quick soup is your tenders. So things like your cilantro, you don't want it to get into a rapid boil, okay? And so um, 
a rapid boil can make your tenders go um, go bitter. So there we go. Let's try that again. Okay. It's a little prettier this time, huh? Has a little more substance. It has a little bit more. Yeah, it, it doesn't look like a. That's pretty. That's real pretty. Um, hold on, let me put. Let me accessorize it there. Let me get a little of this coticha. Put a little cheese on it. Like I said, I'm I'm cheating on it. I, uh, I I think cheese. It makes pretty much everything good. Better. A little of that. And just because I think it will make it look pretty, I'll add a little cilantro to the top. Okay, let's get you a spoon. Now, traditionally, um, traditionally, tortilla chicken tortilla soup is always served with a lime on the side. Uh, again, people like to add their own acid. And then it's also traditionally served with um, with a, a few slices of avocado. Um, so I will give you a line for the side and a couple of avocado slices here. Well, we'll take this avocado half. I'm sure y'all know this tip. You take that avocado half and you just make your slice marks right in the avocado. Now, I would never tell anybody to put a knife going toward their hand, but the skin of an avocado is very um, tough and it's not going to do it. So then all you have to do is take your little avocado and give it a little and it will come out in slices for you and then you can add a couple of avocado to the top okay okay taste tester there you go you got a good food shot there Okay, so our pizza is about to be done. So he'll have his Sammy to go with it. But um, we've got to move on to our next soup because I just looked at the time and I think it says 723, which I cannot believe. So um, I want to get the, um, the soup, I mean the sandwich going for this first. So the sandwich for this, we're gonna to move to, if you have your recipes handy. How is it, Tim? This is really excellent. It has a lot of great flavor, real bright. Good. Um, it's the Thai basil steak salad sandwich. And the reason why I chose this one is this sandwich has a lot of flexibility to it. I can show you a couple of ways you can do it with a lot of different things. So um, the first thing I have is I have a skirt steak that I put into the marinade, okay? Now this particular marinade is, um, is an easy one to do. And um, a lot of times when I get, uh, you know what? Let me check that pizza. Woo, woo, that looks good. Let me give it one more minute. One more minute. I'll tell you this part about, uh, uh, how, how you do it. So when, like, if you go to Arnold's or Big Y and they're having a sale and, you know, I go ahead and I pre-buy um, a lot of stuff when it's on sale and I'll go ahead and put it in a marinade and then I just simply write on it what it is, the date and what marinade I used in it. And then if I'm not going to get to it within two or three days, uh, then I go ahead and I put it in the freezer with the marinade. Now, what you have to remember about that is you cannot, you, once you take the meat out of the marinade, the marinade is not to be used again. 
So you take the meat, you discard the marinade. Some people say you can heat it. I say after you've frozen it, just let it go. It's, it's done its job. Let it, let it rest in peace. So, um, so I have a, uh, some skirt steak and put it into its marinade. And we're once again gonna get the um, uh, pan to rock it hot. And we're gonna cook this skirt steak. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is make a, uh, a mango basil salad. So this particular salad starts with um, sesame oil. Does anybody see it? There it is. So um, I'm using toasted sesame oil. Toasted sesame oil has a little bit more flavor than regular sesame oil. I, I happen to like it. I think it gives it a little bit more of a, a rich flavor. However, uh, if you want a lighter flavor, then uh, just use regular sesame oil. So I'm going to put about a third a cup into this uh, bowl. I am going to uh, take the juice of a couple of limes and put that in there. You know, I learned something interesting about buying that sesame oil, Toya. What? That actually, when you look at the other sesame oils, the ingredient is toasted sesame oil, even oh, if it really? doesn't say toasted. It starts with? Toasted sesames, you know, toasted. Uh -huh. And also uh, there was one that we had to watch, there was one that said blend, and it actually had sesame oil and canola oil. It uh, wasn't a hundred percent sesame oil. Well, that teaches a good lesson always. You should be reading the labels of a lot of this stuff. It's amazing how Think, because our food laws sort of have some funny little loopholes in them. It's amazing how some of the, um, uh, you know, things can definitely um, pass for other things for sure. Okay, so we put in some limes. I'm going to have to get my fish sauce. And then we're going to put in... I'm gonna put in some green onions. Just chopped green onions. Some basil. Some cilantro. A lot of people ask, you know, uh, there is a section of the population who when they do cilantro, they actually get a soapy taste. And um, and so I, if you are one of those people, just leave the cilantro out. Uh, it will not damage it. So some mango. Julie, we have somebody who asked if the pizza's ready that they think it's been more than a minute. Oh gosh, tell them they're my hero. <laughs> Thank you. You know what? Hold on. I'm going to. Have a pan. Yeah. Thank you for that. Okay. Can you shoot this over here, Tim? Shoot that with that. And let me add my uh, cheese and. I just want to say, I forgot about the pizza because. I mean, you've cooked a lot of food for me. That soup is outstanding. Well, see, isn't it nice after 32 years, we still have surprises. Y'all are all going to want to be making that soup. That stuff's good. So we put a little of that the cheese on, Mexican cheese. We're going to put our cilantro on here. And again, this is to go with that soup. Put the cilantro on. And remember the piece of the resistance is, we're gonna take our, it has a little bit of sour cream. Now, if you have Greek yogurt, Greek yogurt works just as well. I 
swear these scissors have. Okay, and I'm just gonna snip the end. I just snipped the end of that. So I can store this in the refrigerator and now it's ready to drizzle, oops, drizzle. And I can't get a good run at it today. Thank goodness we're not shooting a magazine cover today. Yeah, Paul on the British Baking Show would not be happy. With I know, I had just, I had just lost Paul. And then we always sprinkle a little paprika on this on this particular pizza, or definitely on Mexican corn. Okay, Tim, can you still eat a bite? Sure. Good. The bar is high though now. Good. Okay. I should take a piece of pizza over to whoever it was that just reminded me the pizza was in the oven. They're, they're the hero of the show already. Because let me tell you, I had darn forgotten about it. I was moving on to a basil salad. Okay, babe. Here you go. Speak, speak the truth to the folks. Okay, so while he's eating, We've gotten, we've gotten our pan back to rocket hot here. So I'm gonna put this skirt steak on. And this shirt, skirt steak, as you know, is thin. It's like flank steak, it's very thin. It is gonna cook quick. I'm gonna throw this away. Okay. Okay, so back to our mission at hand. So I put our mango into our um, our mixture over here. I'm gonna add my carrots and I'm gonna add slices of Persian cucumber. Now Persian cucumber is hard to find. I know it's hard to find. If you can't find it, then just simply use a regular cucumber. What you need to realize though, is that there is a, um, there is more moisture in a regular cucumber. And so since it has more moisture, you, um, since it has more moisture, you need to make sure, you need to adjust for that and make sure that it doesn't get um, out of hand, uh, get the moisture out of hand. And then I've got some, jalapeno, okay? And I'm gonna to toss this up. Now this is what makes your mango salad. Let me grab a little fish sauce over there. I'll be right back. We're gonna look at a blank screen for half a second. Oh, I was thinking of the day that I, uh, I was carrying fish sauce into the house and I, uh, I dropped, I had two bottles of it because I was going to make a lot of, uh, patai and I, um, and I, I dropped those fish sauce and that fish sauce broke all over. Uh, my kitchen and got on my curtains and everything else. I thought we were going to have to move. It was just miserable. It took forever to get that out. So basically this salad will begin to marinate onto itself. Now we're going to make a sandwich with this. And the way we're going to do it is I'm going to take this um, baguette of bread and I'm going to open it up and I'm going to um, put a little mayo on it. Now, here's the tip. When you're doing mayo for a sandwich, no, I mean, regular mayo is great, okay? But go ahead and give it a little, uh, a little zing to it. And you can put some ginger in it. And ginger is so easy to add because all you do 
is you take your ginger, peel it just a little bit, peel it here. And then all you have to do is you can either run it over a um, uh, um, grater, sorry, couldn't think of the word there for a second, or you can get a ginger grater that looks like this. It's just a little plate. It's also great for um, doing the same thing with garlic. And so if I want a little zing in the mayo, then I just do a little ginger like this and then add it to some mayo and then spread it on the bread. And then after I spread it on the bread, um, I, how's the pizza, Kim? The pizza is excellent too. You don't have to sound that surprised. Is it that surprising? But I mean, the pizza set a high bar, I was concerned. Okay. So we're gonna take our, um, we're gonna take our bread here and I'm just gonna slice it open. While you're slicing, I just wanna let you know, someone put in the chat box that you can find Persian cucumbers at Inner Produce on Belmont Ave in Springfield. Can you say that again? Because I'm all, I, I have to always get them brought in for me. So where is it on Belmont Hills? A Belmont Ave in Springfield at Inter Produce. Nice. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you for that. So I'm going to um, take a little mayo. You know what, babe? I'm going to make you work for your supper. Can you run downstairs and get me another mayo? Mm -hmm. I am so sorry. And while he's, let me just flip this. Flip this right here. Um, While they're grabbing that, I just want to let everyone know, um, I forgot to announce it at the beginning, uh, Julia will be doing another um, program with us in February, a traditional Mardi Gras, New England style. Uh, we'll have a new menu of Mardi Gras um, themed. Uh, the recipes will be provided in advance again to anybody who registers. That is going to be on Thursday, February 11th. Um, I'm going to put the link to the program description with the menu and the registration in the chat box for everyone. I know, I know. So I'm. Uh, he had to bring me up some fresh mayo. I. Uh, you would think I should have bought stock in mayo years ago, um, especially Duke's. I don't know if y'all ever have had Duke's mayo, but it's a uh, it's a southern delicacy there. Um, okay, and I'm just gonna put that ginger into the mayo. And again, we're looking for ways that we can like take things and sort of bring it up a notch. And this is definitely a way, a little ginger mayo will definitely make your, I'm gonna have to get my, uh, okay. Now, some people go, you know, I don't really eat red meat too much. I don't wanna have the red meat of the, of the sandwich that much. And that's okay. Because one thing I do with this is I take um, a spring roll rice wrappers. And this is one thing that I, I use a lot for lunches for the kids. And I use a lot for me. If I have any salad left during the, during a, after I finish a, a, you know, a salad or something, I simply mix up the salad and then I can wrap it into a, uh, a wrapper like this. And I can, um, 
they look like this when you take them out. They look like paper, okay? And so all I'm gonna do is just wet it. So I just wet it. I might add a little of this mayo on there just to give it a little zing. And I just spread it around a little bit. And then I add some of the, a little salad to it. And then I just simply wrap a burrito. You know, I wrap up this edge. Of course, I've done these so many times, I could do them in my sleep, but today it doesn't want to go together, right? And then just this way, and then you fold it up like this, and it makes like a little pocket like this. You can do it on both sides too, but in a few minutes, this rice paper, the, uh, the liquid of everything, will it'll set, and it's just a snack ready to go. Um, it makes, like I said, great lunches. This particular mix is great for lunches, but it um, it will be extra tasty with, um, uh, if, if you have maybe leftover chicken or shrimp or something like that. And so it is good that way too. So I'm gonna put this mayo on here. And normally I would do the whole baguette and I would do the whole baguette and then that would be four servings with the soup. So even though that's a lot of mayo, I would do it with, like I said, a whole baguette. So that's enough for the whole baguette. Okay, let me get this meat up. I've never had so much trouble finding my stuff tonight. Now you obviously notice when I put that meat down, I like meat rather rare. But what I don't like is I don't like meat that hasn't rested. So we're gonna let our meat sit for just a second. Normally I don't have a piece of foil, but I'll put a little piece of something over it so that it can steam and just let it rest for a second. Because the next thing I'm gonna do is put a, um, uh, we're gonna, um, we're gonna slice that very, very thin. Now, anytime you have a flank steak or a skirt steak or anything from that part of the cow, you always wanna cut against the grain. And so we're gonna to top the steak onto here and then we're gonna put the salad on there and then I'm gonna to top it with a little peanut. Now, I will say my baby child always wants me to put a little mozzarella on there and warm it up. But I think tonight we're gonna to save those calories and not do that. Oh, thank you, Tim. Okay, so um, we will come right back to that. Let that sit for just a second. And you know what? We're going to get our mulligatani coming. Okay. Mulligatani is one of my favorite soups. I, um, I don't know why more people don't eat it. I think they're a little scared of it for some reason, but it's just an easy soup to make. And most people have zero uh, aversions to anything in it. So it, um, so once again, we're gonna do the same thing where we're gonna soften our vegetables. So we're gonna have some hot oil, a little bit of oil, about, three tablespoons of oil. And let me tell you, do this in your life, treat yourself, okay? Now this is this will make your cooking easier. I don't wanna to have to keep cleaning up. So I learned a phrase that that is cool. one tablespoon. When you say the phrase and you're pouring, that it equals one tablespoon. So I know that Mississippi, I would bet you $100 if I took that oil out right now and put it um, in a tablespoon, it would equal 
a tablespoon. I've done it enough times. So I always say, Mississippi. Ooh, that one got me a little burp there. Mississippi. So that's about three tablespoons. But learn, learn a phrase that you know that when you pour it, that it's, um, it is a tablespoon. Uh, I know this old Italian woman and she always says, love me more. So love me more is her, her little phrase. And you'll notice a lot of good cooks have that same little habit is they, they learn a phrase to be able to shortcut. You okay, babe? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna soften and we're gonna soften the onion. We're gonna soften celery and carrot. And we're gonna, um, remember that's one of our keys. The next thing we're gonna do is we are going to stir in some flour and some curry powder. The flour will be serve as our thickener on the soup and the curry powder is gonna be used for flavor. And then we will have um, uh, some, a little bit of citrus in it. So let me um, get a, I am gonna measure this curry powder. Does anybody have any questions? Now, I've already promised Rebecca that I would be done before eight o'clock and I am running like a crazy person. So <laughs> I, I greatly underestimated my um, time today. I, you, know, you know how there's some days that run fast and some days that run slow? Well, this is a day that is run marathon pace fast. So I, well, the other recipes, we're just gonna have to talk through. So um, the, the soup that I love is this baked potato soup, the loaded baked potato soup, but I can already tell we are not gonna have time for that tonight. So um, let's talk through that recipe while I've got a second and these are softening. Um, you know what? I bet that that meat is ready to cut. I can smell it. It's it is rested well. Let me. And that that sandwich is just calling out your name, Tim. So, let's see what we got. We're gonna slice it then. Again, we always slice against the grain when you've used these kind of um. Uh, lower cuts of meat. We're going to try and slice it as thin as possible. I would recommend not trying to do this on a dinner plate. It works much better on a cutting board. But quite frankly, I have run out of, run out of room over here. Oh, I told you I liked it rare. That's a little rare. Okay. Let's like put this puppy on. Mm. Now this skirt steak would do an entire baguette. Like I said, so this is this maybe cost three dollars, and it um it would serve all four of us for dinner for sure. Okay, now I'm gonna toss our salad a little bit. And we're going to put, you know what, excuse my hands. I'm going to put that right on this beautiful steak. It's like a Dagwood sandwich. What is this, mango or what, apple? Mango. Carrot? Mango. Mango, cucumber, 
And then the last thing we're gonna add is some peanuts, which is odd to add to a sandwich, but it gives it a crunch. Do you remember when you were a kid and you would put potato chips on your peanut butter and jelly? It's the same concept. And we're gonna to top this and I'm gonna give this a slice right here. Oh, I'm gonna have this. Okay, babe. So that beautiful salad sits on that baguette. We've got that ginger mayo there and we've got a great little salad. Now, our little, you can see how soft our vegetable thing has gotten here. It's perfect now. Mm. That is wonderful. Maybe you had some shrimp left over, a little piece of chicken, then you can put a little protein in it and you've got a handheld little sandwich ready to go. Mm. Okay. So we're gonna make the mulligatawny and while I'm making the mulligatawny, we're gonna talk through this loaded baked potato soup. And I'm gonna ask for your forgiveness now that we aren't gonna to get to it because I am too much of a talker. So we've softened. Softened our vegetables over here. And now I am simply going to um, stir in our flour and our curry powder. Now this is one of those tips that we had. When you add the flour to the vegetables at this time, the flour and the powder of the um, uh, spice is going to bind to the um, vegetables and it slows their cooking. You can see how the sound even changed. It slows their cooking process, but it's also uh, grabbing onto all those water, water molecules and it's, um, it is um, uh, getting ready to create a rich, deep broth for us, okay? Now, the first thing you're gonna notice is that the smell changes immediately, that wonderful curry smell, okay? So I'm gonna add a little chicken broth. I have a little bit left from there. I'm gonna add the rest of this. And I'm going to bring this to a boil. Don't you see what I did? That's clean up on aisle four over there now. Okay. So we're going to bring this to a boil. And after we bring it to a boil, we're going to reduce the heat and we're gonna let it simmer for just a couple of minutes. Then we're gonna add the chicken, a bay leaf, and some dried thyme. Thyme is a great ingredient. And then our last trick of this 20 minute soup competition, we're gonna add um, lemon rind. So if you don't have one of these little tools, one of these microplanes, um, get one. Uh, they are handy. And all you do is you just run it over one time over. You don't want to get down into the pit. You run it over and you get that rind and the rind actually uh, the, the balances everything out with a little citrus and it brings it, it brings a brightness to this soup. So we're just going to wait for this to boil. And after it boils, then we're going to put in the chicken and the bay leaf and let it simmer for just a few minutes. Um, but because I've begun to run out of time, we're just going to talk through this loaded baked potato soup. Now, loaded baked potato soup is pretty much every 
family's favorite. Uh, mainly because it tastes like a good old baked potato. And who doesn't like that? Um, this recipe that I gave you is, is one of my favorites because it's so simple. It has a little sour cream in it, has a little cheese, has a little chives, but most importantly, it has some bacon in it. So kids love it. So um, this soup freezes really, really, really well. So um, I would, you know, greatly encourage you to, um, to uh, make up a couple of batches, two batches when you do it, and then just freeze half of it. And um, the soup is rich and has a great flavor to it, but it's not, it's, it's creamy, but it's not just overpowering. And so that's why the sandwich that I chose for it is this roast beef. It's a roast beef sandwich. And um, it's an unusual sandwich in that um, it's made, I, I developed it for the Pillsbury Dough Company and it uses uh, a, a Pillsbury dough loaf. And you open up that loaf, you put in all the ingredients on it. It has a, a mayo with a little ginger in it and a little um, Dijon mustard and a little garlic. And you, uh, as you can see, I have it all ready to go. We'll have to make it here. We just don't have time to do it tonight. You make up this mayo and this mixture of the mayo creates the sandwich to a whole new level. But it goes in, uh, you put it, you put that on the raw dough and then you put some roast beef, a little basil, a little roasted red pepper on there and a couple of slices of provolone cheese and you put it in the oven and the sandwich cooks while the bread cooks. It's very unusual, but when it comes out, it is, oh my goodness. Uh, Sometimes I'll serve it with vegetable soup because not every kid in my household loves vegetable soup, but if they know they have to uh, eat vegetable soup to be able to get this yummy sandwich, they'll do it. So anyway, um, while we're waiting for this to boil, are there any questions? No? Reminder, everybody's welcome to turn on their microphones. I did enable that. Um, so you should be able to unmute yourself if you'd like and uh, feel uh, free to use the chat box. Um, somebody did ask me where they can print tonight's recipe. I'm not sure if they just mean where can they find it. Um, they should have been emailed to everyone as an attachment. Um, within a few days of when you registered, I can always send that again to everyone. Um, if somebody's looking uh, for assistance printing it, um, we can also help you with that. Uh, we don't, we're not open to the public at the moment for people to come into the building, but I can print some things for people to pick up at curbside if that's what you meant. So feel free to let me know in the chat box or to send me a separate email about that. Uh, but otherwise I don't have any questions here. Okay. Well, I would say um, I am not gonna give myself, Rebecca, a very high grade tonight because we have, uh, time-wise, I have messed you up. But um, soup-wise, we have made some beautiful dishes. So I am going to encourage all of y'all to uncover, you know, forget my mistakes. The recipes you have, I know, are solid and wonderful. So, um, you know, cook one of these soups. This mulligatawny is just, it, like I said, it's really one of my favorite soups. It cooks fast and it, um, it's my favorite thing to take over to people who are not feeling their best. So um, I encourage you in that one. The loaded baked potato is a delight. Um, it, it's not gonna be on your January diet maybe, but it's definitely well worth it. And the sandwiches, uh, Tim is giving a big thumbs up for the, um, for the pizza. And definitely, I guess you ate that steak sandwich too. I haven't had that yet. Um, but, um, but know that that's, that particular salad can be used for a lot of things. So you can, um, you can make it into one of those wraps in a rice paper, or you can even eat it just as a salad on the side and uh, have the steak just as a side item too. So anyway, I am glad y'all um, joined me tonight. And I, I really can't wait till we are out of COVID and we can do this in the library so that y'all can eat all this stuff that gets made um, while we have these uh, cooking classes. So, um, I look forward to seeing you maybe at the Mardi Gras one because the Mardi Gras one is um, is really a lot of fun. 
and we have a lot of fun. So thank y'all tonight. And if you have any questions on the front page of the, um, of the recipes has my personal email and I would uh, welcome any emails coming from you. Is that good, Rebecca? That's great. Thank you, Julia. We have uh, multiple people saying thank you uh, for this class. They really enjoyed it. They can't wait to try the recipes. It sounded amazing while you were cooking. Uh, well, if, you, if you're on your way home, you just stop by and you can have some soup. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. So thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you. to see you all at the Mardi Gras uh, program uh, in about a month. Take okay. care. Okay. See you then. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank y'all.